I am Bex from Channel Bex Bookout Designer and today we're going to have a look at the clothing items you can see here that I've collected over the past, well, some of them from car boots, some of them I've swapped and some of them I've just had a long, long time. So, join me and uh, we'll see what we can sort out. So here's your pencil holder, notepad, pocket, and further on the forearm, a little pocket, great for coins, your keys, whatever you have. And again, one on my right arm, also. So that's that in tan also comes in olive haven't got the olive and uh, of course got the black if you want to stay really warm really cheap you want to go down the road of perhaps your MBC uh, nuclear biological chemical soup and this that is carbon felt and it's exceedingly warm and uh, I love trekking out in this just because it is warm again it's not waterproof it will get wet and uh, they're not nice when they're wet either so I definitely would invest in your Gore-Tex and this comes with the uh, fatigues as well the bottom part which are worn with a brace, a uh, shoulder brace and these are also lined obviously with the carbon and it's this carbon felt that is going to keep you really really warm. The great thing about MBC suits is of course they can be worn straight over your civvy clothes so pop MBC into your ordinary bag and of course when you get into the woods you don't draw attention to yourself by walking out in this and you can just pop it straight over and uh, lovely and warm these again about I can't even remember what I paid for these these are mine I've had these years and years um, these are newer of course these ones on my MBC's which are a lot more modern and it's in uh, I think this is 95 pattern, uh, or the year 95 rather, uh, in desert colours. Again, the felt on the inside, and this was a swap. Um, I didn't, or I wouldn't have paid much for it anyway. Again, that will come oh, with the pants section as well. Unfortunately, the colour doesn't do it any justice if you're in the woodland. Okay, let's see what else we can grab while we're here. So a real bargain, I think, with your MBC suit. Let's get that hung up. Looks like somebody's made themselves at home. Uh, everything is stowed inside the snug pack kit monster and someone here seems to like it uh, what else can I show you this is your standard army jumper I'll have to have a look at the size for this it's 106 that's 106 centimeters and I have outgrown this or rather what I think the missus has shrunk it in the wash around my belly area these are super this is mine it's years and years old it has holes in it it's moth eaten uh, I hesitate to get rid of it even these are really really warm some people find them itchy straight on the skin but there are other items of clothing 
you can put on underneath this to be extra warm. Let's just put that there for now. And of course it's going to be, for me, the Norgi. Everyone should have at least one Norgi. I've got a couple of these. These are a thin fleece. Great as a mid layer. I only usually uh, only wear three items of top clothing and one will be something we'll show you in a minute. A thermal t-shirt, um, norgi like this and then the jumper and a good walk and hat and your lovely toasty warm if it rains. Um, I've left my Gore-Tex over jacket in the van, but uh, we'll come back to that last. So the Norgi as uh, my second layer with the jumper over the top, as you'd expect, it has the elbow patches and already I'm getting warm and uh, this is a fantastic combination if, if you've never tried this combination of norgi and wool together it works a treat I'm gonna treat myself you know to a, a new one of these jumpers in my size because um, like I said it has been shrunk in the wash around this area here. A while ago, I made myself a ghillie scrim. And here it is. Um, if you want to have a route around on the channel and find out how to make the ghillie scrim, it's on there, you'll find it. Really, really toasty warm. Now that is cosy. This is something I found. It's a hood with, and I'm going to have to take this off, it's too hot. Um, this is my hood. This is what I use when I'm bivvying. Um, and in the bivvy bag, the only bit, the only element that is open is your face. So, I can wear. A hood this is waterproof so it would marry up with this really well. I can bring up a face compartment and cinch up like that. I can actually tie it off or cinch it. I'm gonna put uh, so I'm gonna put some cord locks on this so I don't have to tie it. You can wear it just like a scarf like this also. It starts to get cold, there's your hood. It gets any colder, this goes up. Brilliant for a bivvy. Okay, so we've got a lot of warmth going on here now. Got quite a lot going on. We talked about an underlayer and uh, some brilliant thermal army t-shirts that are now on the market that weren't say um, 20 odd years ago um, but I, I like them I hope I've got it in the pack no shamag here I love these as a scarf um, I love them because I can filter water with them as well uh, they have many many uses yes, Mark. always worth an investment uh, forget where I got this from but these are the t-shirts I was telling you about this is I'll have to show you the close up of it this is actually thermal but it's almost like um, some kind of spandex, spandex. Uh, I'm not too sure what the material is and also your summer t-shirts which are like an air tax where it has a very very fine but open weave and here's the weave 
I'll try and get you into some light and you can see them little perforated layers there which help this t-shirt breathe but as where the thermal does not have the micro holes so this is the base layer this is the first layer next to your skin it's really really tight on me it needs to be don't get these loose uh, you want them as tight a fit in as you possibly can and these cling to your body I'd put the Norgi on over that and then the wool over that so this is the summertime air tax I've got this in about three different colours um, and what this will allow you to do in the summertime when you're hiking out is it allows the sweat to evaporate from your body without wetting you uh, like a cotton would and so again I don't really go for cotton t-shirts on a hike always wear these Airtex type of shirts um, I think I got these for around two three quid again it, it's not a lot of money really to kit yourself out for the whole season uh, whether it's winter or summer these are great now trousers I really struggle with when it comes to surplus because I haven't found any I like that much really um, I always wear fleece lined cargoes such as these uh, generous pockets and they are actually fleece lined as well um, trouser wise I probably do have some desert combat fatigues upstairs somewhere very very light um, not much point of them really other than the summer I'll have to dig them out now so here's the desert pants um, you know, I've got a few of these. This, these are totally worn out now. Um, I do my painting and things like that in these. <clears throat> nice to hike in in the summer, um, but at night, of course, it's going to get cold, and these just don't cut it. You, that's when you need your over trousers and a simple softy suit over these for the night time could suffice I, I think ok I'll show you the softies so these are the desert pants don't get me wrong they are comfortable but um, I don't think they're that durable and uh, certainly wouldn't be very warm but a couple of quid per uh, trouser section for your fatigues there that's alright I've also managed to avail myself of a pair of shorts in the same um, MTP as the desert fatigues and this is actually thicker material for the shorts as there are in the actual trousers um, <coughs> strange let's put that there these are well worth the investment these are boot liners and these keep your feet amazingly warm of course you'd have your winter socks on then put your liners on then your booties look like a frog but amazingly warm. Now this seam tape here will come off of, um, with wear and tear just like that one and uh, I'm saying that some of the seam tape here is already coming loose. Um, these aren't cheap um, nine quid somebody wanted for these 
uh, that was in a surplus store. So I found some on the car boat and he wanted something like five pounds per pair. I mean they work, they're good. It's a lot of money for boot liners. I think I talked him down from five pound to two or three quid. Um, I just haggled with him and told him they weren't worth it. But they are brilliant things to have. Boot liners, if you see them cheap enough, I'd grab them. This is one of my favourite finds. Mitts. Brilliant for camping out in cold weather, especially bivvying. Now these are your sniper style mitts with a leather, a leather palm. This is Gore-Tex on the back and an elastication on the top. And on the inside is it's like a fleece. I don't know what's happened to the colour here. Um, the real colour isn't like this at all. The camera's making it look like um, an aluminous kind of green. It's not a, an OD green, olive drab. Now there is a trigger finger here which I can pull my trigger finger through. There. So I have got a degree of um, flexibility for instance if I wanted to strike on my uh, ferrocium rod or something like that. On really cold days of course I have an under mitt which is fingerless gloves but with a pocket on the outside which would make into a mitt and with a suede palm as well wool this this will fit into the Gore-Tex mitt also I hate cold hands it's the first bit on me that goes cold the rest of me I can pretty much regulate my body temperature quite easily with warm drinks and exercise and everything but my hands once they've gone they've gone uh, I can't warm them up again it's called frost nip and uh, I had it a long long time ago and it's just never the same again your fingers they'll never warm up I can pin this back on the velcro and just have fingerless gloves so there's a lovely combination there and I think I've got my other glove in here already indeed I have hammock socks for me you've seen these a million times fleece lined knitted with essential bobbles everyone needs bobbles on the socks so I found these in the supermarket these were on the girls aisle I don't know why they should have the best socks but for me I'm in my hammock no one's gonna see them other than you me and everyone else on YouTube but I don't care no cold feet for backs oh toasty another thing I'll wear are gaiters to keep the bottom of my uh, trousers dry Gaiters will wrap around your leg, will, there's a wire on mine which comes underneath the heel. These are Gore-Tex, um, many years ago you'd use your putties which is more like a wrap that you put around. But for me, I like these. Um, Great for hiking where you know it's going to be muddy. So, the wired heel will go around my boot. I can zip these up. Brilliant. And Velcro to keep that zip free of debris 
Mud. Love these. Well, I said I haven't been too successful getting hiking trousers. Um, something that's ultra warm at night and keeps uh, me cool when I'm walking. So I have to rely on, say, something like a pair of uh, jogging pants like this and then I could easily put them underneath the uh, trouser section on the fatigues there and uh, it's brilliant insulation and they're very light as well so they're uh, jog trousers or PT trousers really and that's prob probably about it so we talked a little bit before about our uh, softies it, so if you're well insulated with the base layer here secondary layer with the norgi and finally I, I only use three and the top layer with the wool then uh, I'm going to be pretty warm I could even forgo the sleeping bag if I needed and go with the softy these are softy trousers and this is your outer layer excuse me as you can see they come very very high up but to keep the back of your kidneys nice and warm at night uh, you're going to appreciate these there is a jacket part to these also these are called softies softy trousers softy jacket um, they're okay they're okay these actually make into a really good under layer which not a lot of people know about these can be worn directly next to your skin then you'd put your trouser section on or like I've just shown you your PT training pants and, uh, and boy you're warm you're proper warm wearing these next to your skin instead of long johns I, and I've done that a few times comes in the, its own little stuff sack here and they will roll up really tight um, the thing I'm wearing around my waist is just a um, waistband for a pack uh, well it's a webbing belt and it's very thick and strong and all it is is to support my back and uh, that's working a treat so it's not really part of the kit I'm showing there you go that's packed up that's half your softies and there's not much difference in size as well when we come to the jacket part both I think will fit inside a jungle stuff sack uh, a jungle sleeping bag stuff sack but you can carry them separately or just loose filled and pretty much you know we've got a really good layering system here um, not all of it will get carried out obviously in one go but everything is stowed in the hundred and hundred I think it's hundred litre or hundred and twenty litre um, snug pack mon kit monster and uh, so if I needed to carry every single item of clothing, uh, say, for a very, very quick getaway, an Armageddon type situation, everything here fits in to my 100 litres. And, uh, and you'd be glad of it. Now the trouser sections, are, like I said, I've got trousers that I could do with like the M range I need better coats 
I'm thinking a pea coat from a navy would be great, a Polish grey coat, maybe a bit too heavy, bulky, uh, but certainly warm. Anyway, I've got just two more things that I've left in the van in Captain Montgomery. I'm just going to slip my trainers on. We'll have a look at a fleece top and some waterproofs behind here on the hangar. Here. So this is what I've just got from the back of the car. It is proper British. 19, I think 82 type uh, fleece again. It has the thumb holes. Makes getting a Gore-Tex jacket on a whole lot easier. And of course, the uh, jacket with it being Gore-Tex is also fully waterproof. It would have originally had a wired hood, a wire through here. I took that out. I was never keen on it. Um, I think this needs repair. The uh, zip needs repair, I think. But there is Velcro, and it will Velcro in. Also, I have the Gore-Tex uh, bottom of the trousers section. Again, both are fully waterproof. Okay, so that's the Gore-Tex um, smock and Gore-Tex bottom part of the fatigue trousers. Waterproof. That's all you need is whatever gear you've just seen, just, just to get your waterproof on. It's windproof this as well. It's windproof, it's waterproof. You've got all your warm stuff on, which we've just shown you there. And that's pretty much um, Kit that's in the snug pack 120 kit monster and most of that is ready to go. I'll choose what elements I want to take out um, as an Armageddon situation or just bug out or even a field camp. Uh, I can swap and change but really they're all packed together just ready to go.